hey guys welcome back to the channel and in this video i'm going to show you how you can store and configure or basically how you can store and maintain your terraform state files into s3 so terraform actually supports a lot of different backends to store and manage your state files so i'm on the terraform documentation page and on the left hand side you can see all the uh, basically backends that terraform supports so you have Azure RM, Artifactory, HCD, Kubernetes, PG, OSS, Swift from OpenStack, right? And the one which we are going to use is S3, right? So, I mean, why do you want to basically use a backend to store your state files? So, state files are very important files uh, as far as Terraform, Terraform goes, right? And you cannot uh, basically version control the state files because they have a lot of sensitive data. So you cannot put them in your version controlling system like GitHub or GitLab, right? So you have to actually store them into a separate storage. So either you can store them locally on the server itself, but that is not, I mean, for production grade system, that is not advised because you can easily, easily lose your state files if say the server crashes, right? If it goes down and you don't have any backup. So that's one fear of storing files locally so that is why you would want to store it in uh, onto something uh, like s3 that is that has availability of like 11 nines right and you know that you your data is secure it will never be lost in if it's stored in something like s3 so that is why i mean organizations prefer to store their state files uh, onto a remote uh, backend server backend service so in this video i'm going to show you how to use s3 as a backend service so for that i need to do a couple of configurations so i am in my s3 console so i'm going to create a bucket uh, i'll call it store all terraform states so that makes it pretty uh, self-explanatory so it's will it's going to store all my terraform states and i'm going to set create all right so my bucket is created now i'll go to my console so i'm not using the modules which i created earlier so i've created a directory in my terraform project so if i do a pwd you can see that inside my terraform projects i've created another directory called site projects and inside this directory i've copied the provider.tf file right so now what i'm going to do is basically i'm going to create a resource inside this particular directory i'm going to initialize uh, terraform inside this directory so that we don't touch our modules which we created right all right so let me just cat out my providers.tf file so i have my aws provider and the region is set to us east okay so one thing before i do anything on my console this bucket which we created i'm going to basically enable versioning on this so i'll show you why i'm enabling versioning let's enable versioning all this you can do it using the terraform itself i am doing it i mean i don't want to keep this uh, in my terraform state i just want to keep this part out of the state terraform basically so that is why i'm doing it from console but if you want you can do these steps also using the terraform right all right so now we have a bucket where we are going to store our state files and we have versioning enabled on that right all right so now coming back what i'm going to do here is i'm going to create a main.tf file and inside this i'm going to create a resource and i'm going to create an aws s3 bucket itself because that actually doesn't takes enough time to create not enough so it gets created pretty quickly right so aws s3 bucket and let's say my bucket bucket equals so let's give it a name which is not taken by anything so terraform 101 test bucket all right and let's give it region of us east one all right so we are going to save this 
it's just going to create one resource so i just want to show what will exactly happen all right so let's save this so now if i'll do an ap apply over here you would see the state files over here right uh, ls lrt so all the state files would be created in this particular directory but i don't want that i don't want to store my state files over here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go inside the providers.tf file and where is it all right so i'm going to use my provider definition so let's go back to the documentation page and you can see that to basically define a backend as s3 this is what you need right so let's do that so terraform backend is s3 bucket is what we created so let's get the name of the bucket let's copy this come back and you you need to give a key so key is basically the name of the file which you want that gets created in s3 so i'll you'll understand so i'll say my terraform terraform state file right and region for this is us east one let's close this let's close this all right now let me clear the screen and let's do terraform plan oh so yes so since we have in a i mean set up a new backend so we need to do terraform in it so that terraform initializes so you can see it says initializing the backend backup backend and successfully configured backend s3 so now terraform will automatically use this backend right let me clear the screen again and now do terraform plan so you would notice one thing that once you start using a remote backend your terraform apply your terraform plan terraform destroy they start basically taking some time okay so i have a syntax error so let's go to main.tf and i think this is not required when we create a bucket so let's do terraform plan again all right so now do terraform apply so you can see that apply normally never takes this much of time but i mean i have noticed this probably probably you you wouldn't notice this but i think that once you set up a remote backend it starts taking some time before it actually processes anything all right so it's creating my bucket So I'll pause the video and come back once this is basically complete, right? All right, so bucket creation is complete. So let's go to our S3 console. So you can see that Terraform 101 test bucket is created. And let's do an ls lrt over here. And you see we don't have any state files, right, in this. So let's go back to S3 console and go to our store all Terraform state. And let's do a refresh. 
So you can see my Terraform state file, it's created over here. So this is the state file and this is the key which we gave, right? So if I open this, so this is the Terraform state file. So now you have this state file in S3. All right. So this is one way, right? Now what we are going to do is we are going to make a change into our uh, resource configuration, right? So let's go back to our console and clear the screen and let's go to main.tf file. Come back over here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set ACL to public read. Save this. So by default, all buckets are private. So, but I'm changing the ACL to public read, right? Let's do Terraform plan. So now this is going to fetch the state from S3. So that is why I feel that it starts taking a little bit of time because now it has to go over the internet to fetch the state. So mostly, I mean, throughout my career, I have mostly seen people using S3 as a backup. Uh, I, I also have never worked with any other backend apart from S3, frankly speaking. But yeah, I would definitely try to do something on consoles. I would like to use console as a backend for my Terraform state files. Maybe we can try that sometime. All right. So you can see that there's an update in place, right? And what's the update? So this is going from private to public read, right? So one to change. All right, let's do Terraform apply. So this should be rather quick because it's just a change, right? It's again refreshing the state. So I'll probably pause the video again and come back once this is done. Yeah, it took around like a minute or so. So let's say yes. And let it make the change. It's modifying. You can see instead of creating, it's now modifying. This should not be more than 20, 30 seconds, not more than that. And this should be done any moment. I mean, it's actually very satisfying to see this, right? Please tell me in the comment if it you also find it satisfying because I do find it very satisfying to watch these logs. All right, so the change has been made. Let's go to a console and let's go to S3 first. Let's do a refresh and let's go to our store all. So now what I'm going to, so you remember we enabled versioning on this, right? So now let's see all the version. So this is the latest version. So let's open this, go back to console, go back and this is the first version when we ran the apply first time now open this as well so in this this first version you can see the acl is private and in this the acl is public read so that is why we enabled versioning if you wouldn't enable versioning on your s3 bucket terraform will override that particular file so you would actually not have the previous state file right because terraform will keep overriding that file that file that is why 
I enabled versioning so that we have all the versions of that file. So when any time you want to go back to a particular state, you can do that using the state file, right? All right. Yeah. So this is it for this video, guys. This is all I wanted to show you. Uh, don't confuse that I created an S3 bucket. You could create any resource and uh, I just created S3 bucket because it it is a quick process. It takes less time to get created, right? You can create an EC2. So let's just go over what we did. So we created a bucket called store all terraform states right and we enabled versioning on that then we went to a console and inside the providers.tf file we set up a backend and pointed it to our store all terraform states bucket right and we set up a key and a region and then in our main.tf file we created a resource and we created a bucket itself you could create any resource over here and then we saw that our state files were there in our S3 bucket rather than our local system. All right. So now you can set up, uh, say, cross region replication on this bucket. So you can replicate these state files across the region just for uh, redundancy sake. So you don't lose data, right? Even if, say, there's an outage on S3. So you wouldn't lose your data, right? All right. So this is it for this video, guys. I hope you liked the video. Please do subscribe to the channel before leaving. And yeah, thank you for watching.